five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hello, everybody. See, it says the Ramble. Alex, and that's me, and I'll be here until midnight, Eastern Daylight Time. And how are you all? Good to see you. Uh, nice to have you on board uh, here on a um, here on a Friday. I'm going to talk to you for a couple of minutes here, and then we're going to go to the citizen panel in about uh, five minutes or so, or ten minutes or so. However, you know, I, um, uh, in case you were wondering why there was little problems at the beginning of the show, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, the technology is, the, the more you think the technology is perfect, the more imperfect the technology is. And... Um, what I have to do in order to get YouTube to pick up this signal that you're watching right now, this, could I do that if you weren't getting a signal? No, you couldn't. Okay. Um, uh, I have to put in a certain key number, which remains the same all the time. However, <laughs> however, the other day something went wrong and I had to reset up all my stuff here and I forgot to change the key number because it automatically changed the key number. So that wasn't in there, so I had to put that in there. But we finally got ourselves on the air on time. And that's all that really matters, isn't it, folks? Doesn't it? So how you feeling, Alex? Oh, you know, uh, Betty Davis said life ain't if, if for sissies. Getting old ain't for sissies. Wait a minute. Getting old ain't for sissies. That's what she said. Hmm. Hmm. And part of it is not being able to remember that Life ain't for old age isn't for sissies. Um, no, you know, it, it's a, 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 like right now, uh, uh, you all kind of know how I feel because you've got a, 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 in back of you this scythe hanging over your head called the coronavirus, all right? And, and so your, your whole, uh, um, uh, boy, I'm hurting my ear for some reason, um, uh, so you kind of feel like, hey, you know, I could be dead tomorrow because this, if I get the virus and I start coughing and I cough too much and then all of a sudden I'm, uh, I'm uh, in, in bad shape, right? And that's, uh, that's all very possible, okay? So uh, I, I, as you get older, getting older is a constant dance with death <laughs> in trying to figure out what exactly... Um, is going to get you. Uh, and, and so now, what do I have wrong with me? Well, I finally got something that could get me, but yeah, they got it in time, and everything should be okay. You know, the doctor says, this isn't the thing that's going to kill you. There, there are a lot of other things out there waiting for you. But I, but I can say I'm a cancer survivor. Well, not yet. I haven't survived it yet. I've still got it. But, you know, it'll go away with time. So anyway... Uh, but you get all these little aches and pains and things like that. Like, I've got a hernia, okay? I'm not doing anything about that uh, because i got too many other things to work about on. Uh, my eyelids need surgery here, not for cosmetic reasons, but because they're drooping too much, and that causes dirt and bacteria to get in there, and that's why I get conjunctivitis, okay? So that has to be done, and so girlfriend said she'd go the four grand to have me take the bags out from underneath here. How do you think this will look if I don't have the bags any longer and the eyes are wide open? No. Okay. Uh, so that that needs to be done. What else is wrong with me? What other little illness uh, plagues me? That's about. It. That's really about it. If I think if I think about it, I mean the cancer, the hernia. Oh yeah, the neuropathy. I get the neuropathy. All right. So all these things are like uh, saying, hey, uh, you, you get, got over the cancer? Okay, here comes another one. You know, so, I don't know. Uh, I ought to be young again. I ought to be able to just go out and get laid for the fun of getting laid. <laughs> I don't know. 
I'll tell you one thing that old age has given me, a certain amount of dignity. Now, uh, actually, there's nothing dignified about being old because everybody makes jokes about you being old and everybody blames anything you do wrong on the fact that you're old and you blame it on yourself, okay? So when you're old, you have a lot of lack of self-esteem. But the one thing you do get is uh, your dignity back. Because when you're younger, and when you're a guy, especially when you're younger, you spend all your time trying to get laid. All right? That's it. That's all that's on your mind. They say that the average male, healthy male, uh, in his uh, 20s or 30s, thinks about sex about every 10 minutes or something ridiculous like that. It's not that we're going to act on it or that we're going to pursue it, but the things we will do to uh, get laid uh, is, is, is ridiculous. Because what we'll do is we'll put up, for instance, let's say you're going out on a date, and you're going out with a woman, and um, you, I'm, I'm like really lefty, right? And let's say she said, on a date, and I'm now in my 20s, and, but, but it's a sure thing she's coming back to my place later to have sex with me, all right? And she at some point says, you know, Trump's really a great president. Uh, now, when you're younger, you will have a tendency to let that go by because getting laid is more important than standing up for your political ideals. But as you get older, that starts becoming a point. And at my age, hey, I, I'm, I'm happily married and... Uh, uh, I well, uh, nobody's happily married, but I'm as happily married as a person can be happily married, uh, and um, uh, I'm not chasing any any tail at this point, and especially since they've been using my prostate like a pincushion for the last couple of months. So you get back your dignity, you know, because as a guy, you're you're not constantly thinking about I gotta get laid, I gotta get laid. Oh boy, it's Friday night, I gotta get, you know. And I'm telling you, I can't tell you how much time I spent mentally pursuing that. Never did anything untoward a woman. Never was forced myself on a woman or anything else. But I, I did play the role of seduction. Uh, everybody plays that game. Women do it. Men do it. But uh, I, I just, it never, it never got, I, I had my, I, at this age, I had my dignity. That's the one thing I've got left, you know, I, Heaven knows uh, I barely have an erection, but, you know, I've got my dignity back. I wonder if that's going to not make me not able to monetize the show tonight. Well, screw them over there at, at uh, wherever. Because, you know, when, I t when you turn this on tonight, did you see the ad? There was an ad that went on first. And if I were to reboot the picture over here, an ad will come up. Every time that happens, by the way, I get a couple of pennies. So whenever you get a chance... Just you know, come to this YouTube site and play the play play the the YouTube thing. Let me see here. If I reboot this, let me see here what happens. I, I'm I'm just looking at it now. Will an ad start running? Yep, there's the ad. It's for does your pet have diabetes? Boy, am I proud to be part of that. Well, anyway, and then they will say later after the show cannot be monetized, uh, uh, but it will monetize anything that you. You run if, if one, it means that there are certain advertisers that will not advertise if you're in that not, cannot be monetized category because uh, they may say, keep, keep me away from that kind of controversial discussion. And uh, 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 what, what did it say? Uh, oh, yeah, Scott says, tell the story about throwing the racist out of your car. No, I'm not going to tell that one again, Scott. You love to hear me tell stories over and over and over again. Uh, but now that happened when I was younger, and I did throw a racist out of my car who I was taking back to my apartment because it was a sure thing. And I, I, was, I, and I did that when I was in my 30s, I think. So I, I was very proud of myself that, you know, uh, as soon as she used the N-word, uh, I said to myself, hmm, oh, you see, Scott, I'm telling the story now. Screw you, Scott. Jeez almighty, getting me to forcing me to tell stories that I don't want to tell. Anyway. But anyway, the point is that uh, as you get older, uh, you know, and also 
life comes down to, you know, I don't know how many years I've got left. Hell, I could have one year. I could have 10 years. I could live to be, uh, who, did I, who did I see the other day? Every now and then you come across somebody um, who is uh, uh, really old. And there is a uh, there was a director worked with Orson Welles. I'm trying to remember his name now. See, my mind is like, uh, uh, let me let me. I gotta look him up. I because this will drive me crazy for the rest of the night if I don't uh, do something about it. Uh, let me see here. Uh, he was in Saboteur. Okay, Saboteur. T E O O U R. Sabbat. Um, no, sad. Hmm. Saboteur. Come on. How do you spell saboteur? Saba. T. T E U R. Saboteur. No, no. I can't. I can't remember now. What's it? What, what, what? Saboteur. Maybe it's. How do you spell saboteur? Saboteur. Tour. Well, saboteur. Oh, there we go. I got saboteur. Here we go. And I can't remember the guy's name right now. So let me find out who, what his name is here. Hold on a second. Uh, bu -bu 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 Norman Lloyd is his name. Norman Lloyd. Do you remember? Do you ever remember the Hitchcock picture saboteur? That was the one I was just looking up, folks. Do, do you remember Norman Lloyd in Saboteur? Now, you'd probably say, well, I don't know Norman Lloyd and Saboteur, but if you ever saw the picture of Saboteur, that's the one that ends on the Statue of Liberty, where the bad guy falls over the side, and Robert Cummings is down holding onto the torch, and with, his, uh, with one hand and with the other hand, he's grabbed onto the guy's um, sh um, uh, shirt sl uh, coat sleeve. And uh, he's holding on to him. Says, "Just hold on. The the cops are coming. They'll get you out of this. You'll be okay." And the guy looks over, and the thread on his, I think it was on this side, starts going. And it, you see that the the sleeve is going to come apart from the rest of the coat. And he's finally he falls. And it's a great scene. That was Norman Lloyd. Now I, you know, I thought Norman Lloyd, geez, uh, you know, how old could he possibly be? Because he's still alive, right? And I looked him up. I looked him up, and believe it or not, Norman Lloyd, guy who fell off the Statue of Liberty, is 105 years old, and I think he may be going on 106. Let me see here. Up, 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 up Norman Lloyd. Here we go. Uh, he was born in Palmetto, New Jersey, uh, and uh, it doesn't doesn't say his age. Oh yeah, November eighth, nineteen fourteen. That would make him actually one hundred and six, I think. Oh, well, in November eighth, I make him one hundred five. Yeah, he's going on one hundred and six. Going on 106, and he's got all his marbles. That's the wonderful thing. See, I, I would love to be 106 if I could st sit here and still do my little monologue and talk to you and have a clear mind about it. And then there was this other actress who I, again, I, I, it, it, it eludes me because they did a documentary on her that's on Amazon, and I'm forgetting her name right now, and I watched the whole documentary because it was a terrific documentary. She got all wrapped up in being blacklisted during the uh, communist witch hunting days back in the 50s. And I looked to see if she was still alive because in this documentary, you know, she looked, uh, she, she looked like she was somewhere in her 90s, okay? She's 102, and she's still alive, and Shecky... Uh, has gone to see her at events and says, she's so sharp, it's ridiculous. So if I could be that age and be that, you know, with it, well, I'm not now. I couldn't come up with the term li live it. I can't come up with the name of the actress. Isn't that terrible? Yeah. Anyway, so uh, 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 it, it was, it's, 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 it's uh, you know, it, it, getting old ain't for sissies is what uh, Betty Davis said, or it was, at least it's been attributed to her. And um, she was right. It's, it's, not, it, it's not easy. 
Uh, but it's not easy being young either. I mean, having to get laid all the time, having your male urges uh, compound themselves and turn you into this piece of jelly that is only thinking about, you know, the lower half of his body. Uh, that, that isn't probably isn't a great deal either. Somewhere in between is really nice. I wish I could age and not have all the aches and pains. And, uh, you know, I just, I just went through this whole thing with uh, five treatments of uh, high-dose radiation, and then they put uh, radioactive seeds in my prostate, which are now sitting there and boiling in my prostate, killing every last little cancer cell. And, um, uh, you know, I've never spent that much time in a hospital in my entire life. I think the, the most I ever spent in a hospital prior to this was I did get a kidney stone, and they had to keep me there for four and a half days while the kidney stone flushed itself out. And then, before that, the most time I ever spent in a hospital was having my tonsils out when I was eight years old. Yeah. So, um, um, you know, all of a sudden, I, I, I believe me, I, I know how to tell the cab driver to get to whatever particular building I need to go to at Mount Sinai Hospital. So, anyway. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, go to. Uh, was any of that interesting? I don't know. Let me let me see here. Uh, Scott, you're out there. I know you're out there. But is that interesting, Scott? Erection, you're not up to. Uh, our, uh, erections are not up to what they used to be. That's correct, Scott. <laughs> oh boy. Anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, whose mom lived to be a hundred? Wes Baggett. Hey, Wes. How are you? We haven't heard from you in a long time. Wes Baggett says his mom lived to be 100. My mom lived to be 100. And people say, well, your mom lived to be 100, so you'll live to be 100. Well, that's not true. My father died at 59. Okay. Let me see here. Where, where is the, uh, oh, the, here we go. We get the Skype going. For some reason, I've got this really, really fast Mac here. This is Mac Pro, this beautiful Mac Pro that I bought. And uh, you'd think things would be faster, but, like, when it comes to doing the... Uh, the um, uh, is it getting the Skype going, it just doesn't get going. It doesn't get going. Okay, well, it's time for you now to uh, to call me, and uh, I have the Skype lines are open. If you look at uh, at my uh, at, at Gabnet Live, if you've got it up on Skype, you can see there's a little green button that says, "Hey, he this is he's active," and um, it's your time to call. By the way, it says, uh, do those cancer seeds stay in your prostate forever, or do they dissolve and work themselves out? No, they stay there forever, uh, but they're not, they're not alive. Uh, they, after about two months, they no longer are radioactive, okay? Uh, who, who's the first person tonight? Of course, the first person up is, uh, he's, it's usually always him anyway, you know, but that there, there, there's Phil. We have in the same spot he was in, in uh, last night as a bottom uh, yeah. on our page. So, good. Hello, Phil. Well, I, How are I you? usually wasn't the bottom. You weren't usually the bottom. Uh, here, here, here comes, uh, here comes um, um, let me see here. Here, here comes Josh Wheeler. I've got to wait for him to pop in here, for his picture to pop in before I can put his picture on online are you there uh oh, there we go okay now i can do it let me see here uh, uh josh there josh 42 okay josh are you there there he is hello josh how are you this evening i'm good how are you doing yeah listen you know i i i i i, I gotta tell you something about the last time you called and and you said something that i really took to heart and that and it's it, it is somewhat of a problem uh, and that was, you were saying that you were kind of getting a little, and you said it also on Jack's show, a little dis disturbed about uh, uh, about uh, uh, how hard it is to uh, participate, let's say, in our little, uh, little uh, what's, oh, uh, 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 Charlene? You, you, yeah, I'm, you, am I okay? Because I'm in my car. Well, you, we, can, we, we can hear us coming back at you. Charlie. Oh, I thought that was going to happen. All yeah. right. Um, yeah, and we I can't. And we can't, and we can't it. see. I better call you when I get home. Yeah, call us when you get home. Okay. okay. All righty. Okay. All right. Anyway, uh, no, but you said that that 
you know, you felt kind of it was hard to get into a conversation because sometimes it gets sidetracked and so on and so forth. Would you explain that again? Because I wanted to, de- when I saw that you were coming, you called tonight, I want to say, I'm going to defer to, to Josh, <laughs> you know. Expl- uh, explain Yeah, that. I mean, if, if you want, want me to, well, I want to, you know, upset you. Yeah. Yeah, look, I mean, I think at times there are people that, take shows that were going in a good direction. Mm -hmm. They get them off track with Mm -hmm. what I would consider childish behavior. I mean, we do not always have to talk politics. And it doesn't always have to be serious. Mm -hmm. All I care that it's whatever the conversation is, is that it stays away from just becoming chaotic. And I think at times... We're going pretty good, and then out of the blue, someone just starts go- going like this, you know? Uh, uh, I mean, and and doing something like that, yeah, and then aggravate, and then the conversation stops, and then it's 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 a time waster, and it just dis- distracts people. And I, I just, I'm not the only one that drives crazy, but yeah, I just, you know, I guess the other night it got pretty bad, and then it got pretty bad on Jack's show. After that, I was just like, you know, I just didn't have anything to say, really, because we'd start talking, and then... Well, you said you had, you said you had the same problem yeah. on Jack's show. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, sometimes people are just, uh, they're just rude or inconsiderate of other people. I mean, I don't interrupt, really, if I can help it, at least. I mean, sometimes on Skype, it's a little hard... Because you're not in the yeah. room, and Skype's a little delayed here and there, and back and forth. But man, some folks just don't, you know, they don't and, get it. And, you, and you're and, not you're not pointing fingers at anybody, you know. No, uh, I, I mean, I think we have some repeat offenders, but I, mean, <laughs> I don't really want to, you know, uh, yeah. argue with them. I mean, if they want to call and you know say that they like doing that or whatever, that's their business. I mean. If I'm like the one man minority and it just drives me crazy, but everybody else loves it, I'm just the one man minority. That's fine. I, then I'm not going to ruin everybody else's fun, you know? Yeah. I just sometimes I get to call on my one night a week and everyone will have had their fun for a while and then we'll start talking about something that's interesting. And like 45 seconds into it, someone will do something like that. And, yeah. you know, the you, show kind of goes sideways and yeah. it's hard to get it back sometimes and well you know as the ringmaster you know, I, I just yeah i really didn't want to say anything because it's not my program and regardless of what you have you know format in this program so mm-hmm. i didn't want it to sound like i did not appreciate what we have because i do well, i mean greatly so you know but well, you know, we well we, we appreciate thing. you josh you know and and the reason why i took what you said seriously was because it is something that sometimes I feel as a ringleader here, as the ringmaster, uh, that sometimes the lion cage gets a little unruly and it's hard to hard to you know reel it in. Uh, I, I he, uh, Jack did say to you when you told him the same thing about his show that the same thing was happening on his yeah. show that night. Right. That uh, that he and I had talked a couple about about a week earlier. And I called him after his show, and I said, was tonight particularly crazy, you know, or is it my imagination, yeah. you know? Or did he, did you, my show get out of hand, and did yours get out of hand, and there was nothing we could do about it? And he yeah. agreed, but we couldn't come up with a solution, you know? Well, I mean, I know that you're worried about, you know, if collars were to drop or whatever, but, I mean, to me, there's just some people that just need to be more respectful of other people and that is that that is what it is i mean i just want to make we do not have to talk serious business all the time i mean you know it doesn't have to be my topics i mean you know there are some things you guys that i might not really have an interest in i don't want to say i don't care so i just wait until the topic changes but then it seems like when the topic changes and it comes to something that i would want to talk about and someone else doesn't want to they start acting like a child and distracting the pro- program. Yeah. You know, that, you know, 
I just wanted him to do what you, you, no, I would do. You were, case, you were also say, just, you were, you were just, also saying just that twenty minutes out. You were also saying something about people with their cameras. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I get a little tired of it just because it, uh, what they're holding up to the screens and stuff like that doesn't really bother me. What bothers me is the fact that it gets on your nerves and then the show stops for 45 well, seconds. Well, what, happen, what happens is, and I have, to, I, I have to say this seconds. to people who call, and most people call, I mean, Phil, for instance, for the most part, just, you know, has one shot of himself, and that's fine, and Jeff is the same, and, and you are too. But we do have some right. people that like being out like Charlene was just out in the car. But she didn't for a moment That's take a okay. look to see if she, anybody could actually see her, you know. And this is because we're doing this as a video primarily now as opposed to an audio. Uh, that is a consideration, you know. And um, by the way, folks, you don't have to have a great camera to do this show. I mean, Phil has a $4,000 camera, as we know. Now, what kind of camera are you using, Phil? It's a Logitech, right? Yeah, same one as yours. <laughs> what, no, the 4K? No, uh, the older one, oh, the, the, nine, oh, yeah, the older. 920 or something. This is a 4K. Uh, but you look, that, that that's your average run-of-the-mill Logitech. And, uh, uh, and, and, yeah, Logitech, and it, it does a great <laughs> picture. And I don't know what uh, Jeff has, but his picture is beautiful tonight. Today, these days, Skype will take nothing cameras and make them look great okay so you don't have to worry about that but it's when you're constantly moving it or you're you know you you you're, you're using a uh, um, uh, what do you call it an iphone uh, uh, and you're you're trying to take a picture of yourself but you're holding it and it's moving it can get a little it can get a little distracting for mm -hmm. the viewer is that what you're referring to josh Josh, uh, I mean, I oh. think for the most, for the most part, I mean, Phil has really never done anything that I can, you know, bugging me, and I don't even care if people call in and they're out walking around or mm -hmm. or whatever. Uh, as long as I, I just to me, as long as it's not a distraction, the video right. part isn't so bad. But there's just this constant stream of people that you know they don't turn the audio off when they're in loud. And it's just always stuff that distracts you, and you got to stop and talk to him about it. Yeah. About it. Yeah. it happens three or four times, and then sometimes you get upset, and then it goes back and forth. Well, you, and, you, you know, you, I just, I mean, someone yeah. just, I just felt like I had to say, folks, you have to take some respect for, for the people that are listening to the program. Yeah. And I just felt like it was a, a general disrespect in that case. And, and there are some other folks who do it in other ways, too. I mean, I, I would was kind of getting a little aggravated with sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. whatever the topic, people just did not seem to be very tolerant of other people's personal desires. And what I mean by that is I've just found on this program, if someone said, you know, I didn't feel very well today and I ate an apple, someone's got to say, oh, no, you, you, you sh shouldn't eat an apple. Eating an orange, I'm telling you, that's bad. <laughs> and it's like, no, look here, dickhead. <laughs> I ate an apple because that's what I wanted. I wasn't asking for your advice. I was telling you, you know what I mean? And, and then they go back and forth, like, like yesterday when you said you don't need to give out medical. I like that because, yeah, I don't need 45 people to tell me what I should take when I have. I'll take what I want to take, you know? <laughs> and if I mention that I took it, I don't really need your your opinion yeah i hate that kind of stuff i mean i i just hate people who are like here uh try some of this food and you say, no no i don't i don't want it i don't like it oh no you need to try some no i, I don't i i've been alive long enough to know what i want what i don't want what i like what i don't like i don't need you to tell me you know? yeah no i mean that, i could really live with that i guess i mean that's the way people are but just some of the stuff that gets you know yeah. off track i, I just did wish it didn't happen because if it didn't happen the show would have a smooth flow and this yeah. is the best thing going i mean where else can, can you call in and talk like this with people yeah. the only problem the only problem is, like for instance great. we have a problem with you tonight because you're cutting in and out a little bit and i think that's because i don't know where your wife okay. i don't know where your wi-fi is in comparison to where you are uh but it it probably shouldn't be breaking up as much as it is now todd on the other hand look at todd Todd just joined us. Todd is in his truck. And look at that picture. I mean, it's gorgeous. 
you know. Correct. Yeah, yeah. And and, um, uh, and and Phil's picture, everybody's picture is gorgeous. I mean, uh, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, where you're coming from, Josh. And, um, you know, sometimes I wonder if the whole concept of the citizen panel was a good idea. Then I think, some nights, yeah, it is a great idea because that was a yeah. great show. And then sometimes I, 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 I walk away from it, and it I, is. in a in a in a flop sweat, going, "Boy, did I have to work that hard? Or is yeah. life better than that?" You know. So. Yeah, I mean, I think that's that's probably any job, but uh, uh, the format's great. I I love the format. I mean, I, I mean, this is. I look forward to this. So I mean, I think one time you said that's the biggest compliment people could pay you. I mean, I look forward to it. All yeah. week it helps me get through the day on Friday. It's like the week's over. I can go home. I can sit in this chair. I can and take my pain pills, and I can talk to some people for a couple hours. It's great. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. I love it. And we've been joined now by uh, there's Kevin. Hello, Kevin. How are you? Okay. Who, who? How are you? We have a little bit of. What is that noise? Jumping around. What is, what is that? Uh, 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 somebody, uh, 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 jo Josh, mute yourself. Are you muted, Josh? You're muted? Ha, 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 and you're mu muted, Kevin, so it's not you. Uh, uh, Jeff, are you muted? Yeah. Uh, are you Todd? Are you muted? No. Oh, that's where it was coming from. What's coming from? There's there's some kind of noise coming. See, this is what we're talking about. There's some kind of noise coming from your from your uh, truck. Uh, do you have a fan on? No, I don't. Mm, wow. Wow. Is that better? Uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, but well, we're not having the problem now. So we'll 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 just. I didn't know. So I had my um my phone sitting on my computer, so oh 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 that is probably what was what was happening. Okay, good. Anyway, uh, yeah, you know it's it, but but it, it it's an incredibly difficult format to do. I I think I developed a format that uh, nobody but me and a few other people who do it here at Gabnet have been able to accomplish. Uh, uh, and and uh, you know I I haven't been able to sell this idea to normal broadcasting. It's not like anybody's interested in it. So, well, they'll they'll wait till you die and then steal it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's the yeah. American way, right? I mean, just yeah. Wait till somebody can't can't sue you and then take their idea. Okay, Phil. Have you noticed that, like on Fox News, they uh, will have four people up in a window? Yeah, uh, you know, four separate windows, and uh, uh, and they Skype in or however they they call in, but they seem to uh, get a feed that's very very similar. Uh, is maybe this is becoming the norm? Well, no, that's a different situation. What there you're going out and you're getting what do we what do we call them pundits? And and each and 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 they they're led by the host, okay. Here, uh, these are a bunch of people calling in, talking with each other. It's a I slightly was just talking about the look. The look. Yeah. Oh, I look. think I think on a constant basis, ours looks better. <laughs> I was saying that theirs was better. I was yeah. just saying that it had some similarities to to the look of what they're doing now on a show on on these Fox shows, for instance. Uh, uh, where you see the you know the different windows and you have the people chiming in and sometimes they're respectful. And well, and their terrific desire on these channels to get pundits on the air, they will have almost too many of them at the same uh, on the air at one time. I mean, I, one day I saw six pundits and the host, and I went, "Why?" And then yeah. they did a ten-minute segment, so everybody had exactly a minute and a half to talk. Yeah, I wasn't talking about the the the, the content. It was more talking about the the format or the look of mm -hmm. you know. Of, of yeah, Her Harris calls them the power panel. Uh, the H Harris. Uh, yeah, Harris she, in, called it the power yeah. panel. It's Faulkner. Oh, uh, what, what was that? That uh, the um, the black yeah. woman. Yes. Yeah, she's uh, does an overtime thing, whatever it is. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, she does outnumbered, and then she does outnumbered, outnumbered, and o- outnumbered yeah. overtime. Overtime. Yeah. yeah, like we need an, we need more overtime. Yeah, exactly. If it was over, oh, outnumbered. That's the name of the show. Outnumbered. Yeah. And then it's outnumbered overtime. That's the legs on the couch, and then she moves on to overtime. Yeah, try it. I call the show "Catch the Snatch." You know, <laughs> I, you know, they cross their legs. They do, but you know, that whole format had to have been thought up by what's his name, the ex head of of. Uh, Adriel. Yeah, it had to have been. Yeah, it had to have been. Because I mean, I was turned on to that show originally simply because I was waiting for those women to, you know, do the uh, do the Sharon Stone deal. Mistake. You know, <laughs> yeah. You know, if you look at CBS, they're at a desk. The desk is glass, kind of. You know, so you can see the whole person, or it's plexiglass. But uh, no, but I'll tell you, if you go over to MSNBC, it's just you know, it's a desk, and women sit in front of the desk. And you go over to CNN, women sit in front of the desk. Over at Fox, they've had women sitting on stools. So with it, leg, yeah. so you could see their legs. You know, uh, the 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 thing was made of plexiglass, so you could see through it. I mean, uh, th- that whole format was centered around women showing various parts of their anatomies, almost. TNA. TNA. Yeah, but. That's not proper anymore, right? A and T. But anyway, um, got to say something, and I don't know if anybody agrees or disagrees with me. Uh, today, the president gave a speech about what he's going to do about uh, de- declaring a national emergency. That was quite the show. Yeah, but I have to say. He was quite good today because I think somebody finally got to him and said, you want to win the next election? (laughs) You better stop acting the way you've been acting and you better start acting more presidential. Did you feel, Kevin, that he was a little bit more on his P's and Q's today and more the kind of person you wanted him to be in this kind of crisis, although it's a week too late, but, you know. Yeah, a little bit, but I thought it was kind of funny that he shook hands with every CEO <laughs> in the country. And then when they finally got to the guys that were running the labs, he started bumping elbows and he said, oh, I like that. <laughs> you know, I mean, I think that the the, uh, the thing that I felt was that at least I, I couldn't complain about his solutions, okay? Uh, but I, But he, he was doing it. For all the wrong reasons. He's doing it for elective purposes. Rather than saying, I've got a national crisis here. I am the leader of this country. It is my job to make sure that this country has as little uh, uh, an event as possible through this thing. Uh, What he did today was good. Uh, The stock market immediately rebounded by almost the same amount it lost yesterday, which was yesterday was about 23, 2400 points. Today, it went up just in minutes to 1800. I'm only down ninety five dollars at this point. Oh, good. Yeah, I think over the week it's still down nine percent or something, isn't it? Over the week. Oh yeah, it's it's still not good. But but yeah. all it took was him to do something to give people a sense of confidence or that something was being done, to for that to turn around, uh, and that has not been something he's been capable of doing until now. And I think he had some handlers who finally said, look. You better start listening to us. Or you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, lose this whole thing. Uh, and um, so I think he came up with some fairly acceptable solutions. You know, uh, as I say, probably a week late. I mean, this probably a couple of months late. This thing should have been headed off at the pass a long time ago, uh, but we didn't do anything about it. Uh, but what, what, what did you, what did you, did you hear it, Todd? Yeah, I heard it. What you, what'd you think? I kind of, I mean, I agree a little bit. You know, it was it was a little bit better than usual, but you know. Yeah. Uh, how how about you, uh, J- uh, Jeff? You got your hand up. Oh, turn your mic on, Jeff. <laughs> Bingo. Yeah. Uh, Pam and I were listening to it, and all of a sudden, we were just 
who can believe it that I said, who wrote this for him? Yeah. It sounded like normal he, for he, a little bit. There was one other thing that he did, and I don't know if you noticed this, but he started off by saying, I want to thank all of you for being here, or thank you for being here. He never does that, you know? Never, ever, <laughs> ever, ever. And he was very conciliatory that way. And I went, geez, you know, this is unusual. Hello, Tony. This is really uh, uh, different for him. Somebody got to him. Somebody right. said to him, you're losing it, pal. You know, you're, 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 the stock market's going south because you're not instilling confidence. And this is how you got to do it. And he looked like some kid who was told by his parents, now we're going over to grandmother's house and don't put your feet up on the table, you know. Uh, and and get, mind your p's and q's and call everybody sir and ma'am and you know be be the son we were proud of right so I think somebody got to him yeah but remember after that when he was interviewed by a couple of people on uh, the news who asked him questions and said well did, didn't you think that this was really inappropriate. What you did, and, and uh, that you're responsible for some of these things, and you're in charge of this kind of stuff. He goes, "Oh no, not me." Well, that's where I all of a sudden I felt he was he, he was going off script and gave the wrong answer. You know, there's a right answer and there's a wrong answer. The right, the wrong answer was the one he gave when she when he was asked by uh, that lovely woman over at NBC who I lust after. Uh, 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 um, Elk. Kristen Welker. Yeah, Kristen Welker. Uh, he, he said, do you, do you hold yourself at all responsible for the crisis that we're currently in? And he said, absolutely not, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> well, you know, that isn't a presidential answer. The answer is the, Harry, is the Harry Truman answer. The buck stops here, you know. It's under my watch. It happened under my watch, so I have to take responsibility <laughs> for it. Obama said that once on one occasion for something. He said, it's, my, it's only my fault in that I'm president, I am responsible for this, and I, and I didn't manage to head this off at the pass. That would have been the proper answer, and everybody would have gone, gee, you know, Trump's getting to, be, getting to learn how to do his job. Phil, what did you feel? Um, well, his initial response to her was was not right, but his follow up, uh, where he uh, said what he did, uh, and and the fact is, you know, uh, people aren't giving him credit for uh, cutting off uh, tr uh, the people from China uh, early on, which did save lives. And if you look at it, there's what about 45 deaths uh, in this country right now, and uh, almost most of them are in Washington state. Uh, so, you know, I, I think he has done a good job. He's been fought uh, on every angle uh, uh, for the things that he wanted to do when he originally cut off uh, a visitation from China. Uh, he was called a xenophobe. He was, uh, he was called every name under the book. And now they're turning around and saying, hey, he did the right thing. Well, no, he, he did he or didn't he? I think he did that more to get at China. No. no wait a minute. Let me finish. Let me finish. He did that more to get at China because the fact of the matter is, okay, you stop, stop him from coming in from China. That doesn't mean the people from China go to India and then they hop over to Europe and then they come here. You know, well, that, doesn't, that doesn't stop it by stopping the flow from one place directly to us. Kevin, you have your hand up. He essentially blamed it on the previous system, is what he said. It was the system that he inherited is what he blamed it on. Yeah, there was a whole bunch of regulation that they talked about today. Um, you know, of course, I, I'm in the car listening to this stuff. I don't write anything down. But uh, there was a whole bunch of different regulations that he lifted uh, that uh, – changed a, a number of things. And I don't think that the CDC or any of the other uh, agencies were prepared for this kind of uh, thing, but they, they weren't prepared in the past either. You know, I, I got to tell you, Phil, and I, I, can't, I can't tell you the number of times I've seen documentaries, and I'm sure the rest of you have as well in recent years, about the eventual pandemic. You know, yeah. and and so we've always been talking about it. And some countries, oddly enough, have prepared for it. 
Uh, we haven't. Mm -hmm. We've done nothing. And, and I'm not blaming that just on Trump. I'm just saying we as a nation almost take this feeling, oh, we'll deal with it when it happens. Well, uh, Ryan sent out a, a, a post today on Facebook uh, that was a limited post. And he said that uh, their test is, uh, I, I think, going to be ready Monday. And it's a 30-minute result. Uh, mm -hmm. by youth, That's wonderful. Uh, how many tests uh, are going to be available, Phil? Uh, how many, people, how many uh, tests? 40,000 a day they 40, can 40,000 a day. How, ma how many is that a week? Well, that, uh, well if you have a five-day week, it's 200,000. Yeah, well, no, and now, now, how many people are in this country? Well, I, I understand, but there's other ones. He also <laughs> mentioned Roush has one, but their test is a five-hour test, and theirs was released today. Trump today was talking about we could be ramped up within a week to get out four million tests, and that's fine. But that that's a spit in the, in the ocean. Initially, you want to test those that are at risk, those that have either traveled uh, been exposed to those that you know have the virus, as well as, uh, you know, those that are starting to exhibit uh, the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the reactions, but it could be flu. So the only way you're going to be able to determine, uh, I guess, if it's flu or if it's coronavirus is by administering the test. So if you have somebody that has flu symptoms and you administer this test and you have a result in 30 would minutes... You, would, you, no. would you want to see a law passed where if we had sufficient amount of tests that everybody in America would have to be tested? Uh, you know, they can't do that under our Constitution. What, 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 why can't they do it? On, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, what, what, idea that people are tested let me let me if they have probable cause to test them. let me go to our constitutional scholar josh josh would that violate anything in the constitution if they required everybody for the the for public safety to get tested to see if they have the coronavirus or not i i hopefully i don't break up too much here i know my connections poor enough uh I think there would definitely be some Fourth Amendment challenges to that, for sure, as an unwarranted search or seizure. Um, I mean, a, a, a seizure can apply uh, to a person as well, your time. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it, I, I'm not saying black and white that it definitely would be a violation. I'm saying someone's definitely going to challenge it, and it's 50-50 it's how it would come out, I mean, I think. <laughs> Yeah. Would it be the same for the, <laughs> I think we'd have to be much worse off than we are now. Yeah, would, would you know, it, I think we'd have to be much worse off than we are now before it would sail through, so to speak, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, I almost think you'd have to be to the point where, you know, under some of the powers granted to the executive branch in a national emergency, I mean, I think you'd see martial law at that I yeah. mean, if that makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Similar again. to uh, making people get vaccinated. Hmm? Uh, you know, when they try to force people to get vaccinated and they have these anti-vaxxers uh, that, uh, you know, it's kind of a similar thing that uh, these guys resist vaccination uh, because of reasons or some other reasons. And I guess they resist the test and it could be a privacy issue. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see here. Hold on a second. I hey. gotta, there's, there's Ray. Hey. Where are you, Ray? You've got your... You've I'm got your, going coal mining. Yeah, You're a lighthead. I'm going to go mine for coal. Yeah. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, for instance, the Chinese, mm. uh, the in China, the virus is now going the other way. It's, it's g going down rather than going up. Uh, and it's happened because they took some rather draconian measures in order to make that come about. You know, I mean, they were literally, I don't know if you saw the videos of them arresting people and really? dragging them out of their homes, <laughs> yeah, in Wuhan, to get them to detention centers so that they could, you know, be isolated from the rest of the population. But they took very draconian measures, but they wiped it out, <laughs> you know, I mean... It, uh, uh, how far do we go to stop this? Is the, I guess my question. Do we should we be shut down for a week, like only like in our certain areas? Uh, like, well, like but, but, a mile but, radius. New Rochelle is like a uh, uh, a prison camp now. Yeah, they got the National Guard there. Well, uh, not, I, I don't think 
I don't think it's to keep people in. I think it's just to keep people from going in. Yes. Now, I understand that uh, you can't force people to stay in the uh, in their homes, mm -hmm. uh, even if they have uh, the... Uh, They've done it. They've done it in uh, Italy. Well, they did it in Italy, but in America, you know, I don't... Uh, here's here's how they did it in Italy. You can leave your home. They, but if you don't they, have if you don't have a good reason for being outside your home, they'll ticket you, they'll fine you. Well, uh, I was listening to something that that they were talking about that, and that you know, yes, they want in that one mile area, they don't want uh, lar uh, large gatherings and and things like that. Uh, but it it didn't sound like a prison camp uh, from the way that it was being explained. Well, uh, in, in, in Italy, what I'm saying in Italy is what they're doing is if you are a, uh, 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 if you're out, it, 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 uh, uh, turn, turn your audio off there. Oh, okay. 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 Um, if you are uh, um, uh, out of your house, you have to prove that you're going somewhere that is important for you to go, like they allow Ooh, you to go to farm. a supermarket or a pharmacy. Those are the only two reasons. Otherwise, stay at home. Uh, well, if, you, if they find you without a good excuse, they can ticket you. and They can fine yeah. you something like 200 lira, I don't know, whatever. You know. But the trains run on time. No, we're not, it's not time for a joke, Phil. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Italy. That's no, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a seventy-year-old joke, okay? <laughs> it's like WWT. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, but I'm just saying that. I mean, how far do we go to protect ourselves, and how how far into this are we that it could get really, really dangerous? Ooh. I mean, we the trouble is what what what, what, what our problem is. We don't know. We have no answers to almost anything. We don't know how far this could go. We got to see how many people get tested and what the numbers really are. Yeah, save it's really a lot. All I know is I've got a, 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 a an arrow pointed at my back from the coronavirus, and so does Jeff, for instance. And, and actually, my mom and so does Phil, and so yeah. does Kevin. Are uh, you ginning this up? Huh? Are you ginning this I'm up? Not ginning I'm, it up. I'm, not, I'm not ginning no, it up. What I'm, I, I, what I'm saying is we have uh, the people who have primarily died as a result of this virus are not really not children and not teenagers and not young adults. These are people over the age of 55 who have this some guy. kind of precondition. Most of them were in assisted living homes. No. Yes. yes so around Washington. the world, Phil? Half of them were no, in That's where it started here in the United States. But what I'm that's, saying is around the world, that isn't true, Phil. Well, in the United States, the people that seem to uh, be vulnerable, uh, the majority of them were in people Washington. Have died, uh, people who died in New York State are not, 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 not uh, people who are in senior facilities. Oh, that was the Jews' fault. What? I don't get that. Uh, oh, the guy who, uh, the attorney who uh, was the uh, uh, yeah. ground zero in New yeah. Rochelle was, uh, 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 went through Temple, and he had it, and he spread it to all of those oh, people. One, but that was my accident. It was the yeah. one guy. Uh, was let's patient. go to, yeah. let, uh, where are we with, uh, I'm, I'm trying to uh, find, which one of these is, I can't figure out which one of these is, uh, uh, is Charlene. There we go. I got her. Okay. All right. Anyway, yes, Kevin. So uh, today, or actually last night, they were cutting my daughter's high school time back. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the day today, they shut down <coughs> our high school here in town. We only have one high school. And now they've shut down the whole county, all the schools yeah. in the county. There's seven different districts mm -hmm. in this one county. It's kind of convoluted. <laughs> We have a lot of rural schools here, and they shut down every one of them. And one of the reasons there is because a lot of the, the kids, you know, this, this county in particular has a lot of um, parents living with kids and elderly parents living with kids, and the kids go to school. The kids could be bringing this stuff home and infecting older people. So that's one of the concerns that they had. They're not necessarily in, you know, uh, assisted living homes. They're living with their 
kids and they're grand- bringing this stuff home to their grandparents and they wanted to try and stop it that way as well. Yeah. Well, there was somebody who said that if uh, if you're if you think, oh, well, you know, if I get it, it's not going to be that terrible. Just remember, you can still carry it. And there could be an elderly person who will catch it from you and could die from it. That right. the, the, you, not, you wouldn't even know that you're carrying it. Yeah. Yeah. What is all that noise? I think that voice is uh, Pamela. Uh, oh, oh, voice is no voice. That, well, anyway, it, it was just like somebody was cooking or something. Anyway, um, it's, uh, you know, I mean, it, 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 Phil, you're wrong. It's not people living in assisted living places. It, it, elsewhere here in New York, uh, it's, uh, oh, well, I mean, I, 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 I wasn't aware. I wasn't aware, for instance, that the mayor of Miami is living in a living facility, you know. That's aware, but in Washington State, mm-hmm. at the deaths came. No, but we're talking about Washington State. There are so many. How many other states are now infected with this disease, where Bill? The most cases are mm-hmm. at the most deaths. Where the most cases. Washington uh, State and, had wait a minute. confirmed 568. 37 hey, deaths, wait, wait, listen, one Phil. recovery, and active 530. And how many of them were in an assisted, the deaths were it in It doesn't assisted, say that, but it just I, says 37 I, I, deaths. Of them. Phil, the, Phil, quit being so, a doctor. The statistics you're wrong on because you're not. we're not dealing with just Washington State. We're dealing with I, the entire I, country. Not dealing yeah. with just Washington State. All I said was the majority of the deaths took place in one assisted living facility. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, anyway. What? Yeah, all right. Okay, look who we've been joined by. Ah, hello, Kathleen. How are you, dear? Tired. Really? Exhausted? You work at a Costco. You work in a Costco. I'm not exhausted, but yeah, 12 hour shifts. You've been working at Costco, right? Uh, I'm at the wet depot, so I'm in 38 degrees, okay. so it were meat, produce, and then anything refrigerated okay. and frozen. Let me ask you there, this. I, there's plenty of. Uh, well, I saw, okay, on, on the TV tonight, uh, on NBC, they had a picture of uh, all the people uh, who were lined up for Costco to get uh, toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> And it literally, it literally was running around the block. Is it that way? Yeah, your co- I, is it that way at your Costco? Oh, wait a minute, let me. Is it, do no, we, we, we don't have a full house, do we? Yet? She's at the warehouse. <laughs> I don't work at the store here in Tracy. There are four Costco warehouses. There's the store. Mm-hmm. I don't work at that. Mm-hmm. There's e-com, our e-commerce that's gone ballistic. Yeah. Then there's our dry depot. Those are the poor folks having to deal with all the shipments of toilet paper and water. I'm in the wet depot. It's all um, meat, chicken, fish, um, all, all kinds of produce, and then anything frozen or refrigerated, cheeses and whatnot. And so uh, usually we, you know, in Tracy, we average about 98 to 110 trailers. Yeah. 230. Wow. Wow, but uh, uh, so but a- answer me this one. Maybe everybody else can too. Why this run on toilet paper? I mean, of all the things that you're doing a run on, why toilet paper? I guess people think they're well, going to get the green apple splatters. Runs. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous because every store is like that. Target, Safeway, no, 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 everybody. No. I, I was at my my Costco yesterday, and there was no line for toilet paper. At all. What do you got? You know what? The, um, there was no canned food left, though. All the canned. No food. canned food left. Uh, well, you're you're. Don't say it too loud, because people will be at your door. There was people at six o'clock in the morning. Well, everybody's wor- wait for the damn store to open. Yeah, everybody's worried about this, uh, from the standpoint of that they're not going to be able to come out of their house for two months, and so they're getting all the canned goods they can and the stuff that are non-perishable. You know. I'm sure you can buy a good steak, okay? I'm sure the meat department is just fine at Costco. Uh, but- oh, I mean, you know, well, Monday, it was funny, you know, we're in the where I work in the meat department on Monday, so I roll in at four in the morning. So the manager's all, we got to get all the 663 out. And so I look at one of the other guys, Kay, 
And uh, I go, I wonder what six six, which store six six three is. They ran out of meat, and so we find everything that's six six three, and it's everything's palletized. So it's five big old boxes of this, twenty big old boxes of that. So we send it out, and I go, what do you think six six three is? And Kay goes, probably big Las Vegas. And so later on, I find four more meat, and I go to my sister in law because she's a manager, and I go, can you get a hold of Mark? We found more. Meet for 663. She goes, oh, girl, we already sent that out. They'll yeah. get that today. They'll get more on the second trailer because, you know, it's local. And I go, where is 663? Which store? And she goes, Concord. God, I wish I had stock in uh, Costco right now. I mean, they, they got to be yeah. doing land office business. You know, I, I didn't even go over to mine today. Usually I go on, on Fridays or Saturdays. I'm not going because I don't want to have to put up with it, you know. I went today. You know, I went, I came home from work, and then I told my son, I said, well, I need to go get some stuff. And really, I just went to get cat food and kitty litter. Yeah. I mean, we're good. I cook from scratch. So when you open up my pantry, I mean, I'm fully stocked. <laughs> but you know what's scary about this whole thing is how ill-prepared people are for just a earthquake Mm -hmm. or any type of disaster. Phil, what was this you just sent me? Because you, you send me things, and I, uh, I don't have time to read them. So why don't you tell us what it says rather than just sending me stuff? Oh, uh, Business Insider uh, says more than 60% of the U.S.'s cor uh, coronavirus deaths are linked to a Washington nursing home. Uh, here's what we know about it. No, that, 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 we didn't say that wasn't true, Phil. That wasn't what we. That wasn't the point we were making. We're talking about then as opposed to now. It was two days ago. No, uh, was, oh. two days ago, sixty percent of the deaths came from one nursing home, and all I said was, "Well, that's because that, where it broke out first, Phil. Gosh, you know, you're what? not you're not listening to me. And I said that nursing homes are vulnerable because of the. Uh, the people that are there are and, old, yeah, and that's where most of the deaths occur. Mm -hmm. And these and those people are the most vulnerable, right? Okay, well. they were they were concentrated to one facility and a boat and a boat and a yeah. boat and right. a boat. Not yeah, the, 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 there's cases of of the virus, but there's not that many deaths on the boat yet. But Phil. But, Phil, all those other people who got it later uh, and who aren't in old folks' homes are going to die. Not, that's, no, that's not true. Yes, uh, they uh, are. 90, I guarantee uh, you some of them are going to die. No, mo some of them will, but yes. most of them do recover uh, from this. This is well, not somewhere a between 1% and 3% are going to die. Well, that was based on the old statistic of the number of cases and the number of deaths. Uh, no, but they know in China. It's as, the, as the cases go up, the percentage of those we that don't die, look, Phil. Uh, Phil, uh, unless you unless you you it's got one percent at least. Unless you've got a crystal ball, we can't predict what's going to happen. That's why it's a real problem. If we could I predict it, wait a minute. Let me finish. If it were, if we could predict it, then th it wouldn't be as big a problem because we know how to handle it, but we can't predict it. We don't know how far this is going to go or how many people ultimately are going to get killed. Yes, it started in a, in a in a old folks' home out in Washington, okay, in the United States, and spread from there, may have spread from other places as well, but it, that was a main, the main outbreak, just like Wuhan was the main outbreak in China. Okay, but there's always there's always a flashpoint in something like this. But now it's spread to the entire country, and the population it's affecting aren't only in senior citizen homes, although they are the most vulnerable. Read the article. Well, that's like my buddy and I at Costco were saying, um, Kay, he goes, you know, Kath, you and I being healthy, we could have it, not even know it, and be infecting everybody else. And I go, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, uh, Charlene. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kathleen just brought something up. Uh, they're saying that, you know, if we ever get the testing now, I heard there's like somebody, uh, where do they have the drive through testing or something? Like once we get to the point where like we're testing everyone, we're going to find out that a lot more people are actually, you know, carrying it and have it and stuff. And then it's going to get really South crazy. Korea. Mm -hmm. 
You have a full house. Do, do we have a full house? Uh, okay. Well, then I will. Yeah, that's what they want to have here, where uh, you can get it easier than it is in this country, where you know, I don't. I heard that someone uh, was going to be tested. Somebody who said her friend is pregnant, and the doctor wanted her to get tested, and she didn't want to go to be tested because she thought she'd be contaminated. And I was out today talking to some people, and the things you hear, they proudly will tell you they're hoarding. Uh, you know, two cases of water and two cases of toilet paper. You know, I mean, that's why there is none now. In the well, store. you know, know, what's great about toilet paper is you can't buy enough toilet paper. I got a lot. Yeah. In you know, I mean, what's a lifetime supply of toilet paper? There's not enough of in a, in a full a lifetime supply for you to be able to keep it in your house. We, have, we right? have in Jersey. Do you remember the Pathmark man years ago, that crazy guy with the glasses? Well, they had the ShopRite can-can sale in Jersey. Well, ShopRite's really big out here now, you know. And they have this thing called Paper Bird. It used to be just ShopRite brand toilet paper. Now they're launching this thing, Paper Bird, so it looks like Whole Foods or something. So they had a great launch on Paper Bird toilet paper because now it was so successful. There isn't one role in the whole of ShopRite in New Jersey. We're not, we're not advertising for, Paper Bird toilet paper. But uh, I think there'll be a run on bidets pretty soon, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the guy at the gas station told me we're going to have to use our hands and wash it because there's no toilet paper today. And you believe All it? our trees that are getting leaves are going to all be picked. It's going to be horrible. Well, they used to use the Sears Roebuck, but we don't have that anymore, right? We'll have to use, like, well, nobody has newspapers, right? I don't know. <laughs> uh, who's trying to, right, hold on a second. I got, I got to check. Uh, who, is it, who is it that just called us? Who is this that I have on the line? Anybody? Okay, somebody was calling, and it uh, didn't uh, didn't come I'll through. Give you a uh, royal flush. Well, no, but I, I'm not, I, I don't have another person here, so it, they, they, they didn't come on. Okay. I had three commercials tonight, Alex. <laughs> well, good. You made me some money. Okay. <laughs> you know, uh, I I don't know who that was, and I don't want to have one more person here right now. Anyway, um, uh, it it's but it but it, it, you know, I mean, I I don't like uh, any speculation on this program about it. It, it is what it is, and we're going to have to see where it winds up. And all we can hope is that we catch it early enough with with people who do get it and uh uh you know that everybody everybody's safe you know um well, a good uh, place to uh track it if you ever gone to the john hopkins uh the john hopkins map you can see all the stats there oh really it's a r c g i s dot com yeah it's got a beautiful map and where everything's going live and all that good stuff. What, all the does it say? Does it say what stuff. state has the most outbreaks uh, right now? Well, it goes all it goes all over the world. But looking at it right now, it's spread out all over. It looks like Washington has the biggest dot, and then Mid California has a pretty big dot. What about Massachusetts, like the Boston area or something? I don't think anything is up there. Uh, yeah, Massachusetts. Well, let's is pretty let's for clean. a moment. You they know, canceled it, the Boston Marathon, so we so that we won't we don't have to be completely dour about this. Well, let's talk about the good things that are happening as a result. No, actually, they do have some uh, uh, the the good news um, uh, in this whole coronavirus. To begin with, to England. To begin Maybe. with, uh, 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 Joel Osteen won't be able to do his uh, revivals down in his big mega church for a while. And so that's good news, right? And it's good news for me that they're not going to be doing the final four with, an, uh, I think, with an audience. They're going to have, a, they're going to do the final four, but the, oh, they're not going to do it at all. They've canceled nope. it completely. Nothing. Well, that for me is, is just wonderful. So, I mean, there's a, there are two positive things for me right now. Which you know what? If they did have pro professional sports in an empty stadium, they should pipe in canned laughter. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I watched Colbert last night, and he had no audience. Really? They, they, yeah. Colbert, they, 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 they broadcast the, uh, the rehearsal. Yeah, so well, that's, yeah, it was like 10 staff members or something. In yeah. The, yeah well, he wasn't happy at all. 
Well, it was, was, no, it was pretty funny. Actually. Well, it was he funny. Needs his yeah. Audience yeah. It was I'm funny. Sure. I was watching the Price is Right. I was watching the end of the Price is Right the other day because, after all, that's the only time to watch that show because that's when the big prize is given away, okay? And at the <laughs> end of the credits, they start rolling the credits. And one of the last credits is this uh, show was performed before a live studio audience before the outbreak of the coronavirus. <laughs> Wow. Good grief. So I'm going, okay, fine. I imagine Jimmy Kimmel's not going to have an audience tonight. Um, um, let me Conan, see. Conan, all of them. Oh, no, yeah, well, Conan never had an audience anyway, but that's another story altogether. <laughs> uh, uh, but, I mean, uh, there was one other, it was one other positive thing. I was, oh yeah, yeah. The St. Patrick's Day parade's been canceled in New York City, oh, and I'm going. Uh, nobody. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Fight. <laughs> right. Right. Am I right? To, am I right, Tony? You know what I'm talking about, right? No, no green puke in the subway cars. <laughs> drunk by the bar, and then they fight in front of my house. So then they shake hands and they start fighting again by the end of the block. Yeah, one <laughs> one less excuse for the Irish to get drunk. Ah, you know. How they just kill each other. <laughs> yeah. So. It's uh, her. Milk. Enough already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, now you're you're there in the truck, right, uh, 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 Todd? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, how how uh, how uh, 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 are you being careful about leaving the cab, as it were? <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty careful. Um, you know, I go in the stores and the um, truck stops and fuel up, and I try to clean my hands and I watch what I grab and touch, and I try to stay away from. Well, I always like staying away from all the truck drivers. So. Yeah, right, right. But I mean, <laughs> yeah, they're kind of shitty places anyway, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. Well, some are, some aren't. You know, just yeah, make yeah. it easy. Stay away from them all. Well, I've been in one of some, one, one, one of the uh, uh, worst places you can be during crisis like this. I've been in uh, one clinic and one hospital. Yeah, uh, well, and true. you know, and now see, uh, what do you call it? Mount Sinai sent out a thing today. Didn't send it to me, so I guess it doesn't apply to me. But Mar Marjorie got a copy from them, saying they are limiting the amount of guests that a patient can bring to Saint to Mount okay. Sinai to one person. And, to Mount Saint Sinai, and we, we what what. To Mount St. Sinai. Mount St. Sinai, yeah. Uh, and then, here, here's one that's kind of interesting. We, we have a dear friend who has been married forever to this wonderful guy. And he has gotten, um, I don't know if it's MS or something else, but he's had to be put in a care facility. Uh, and she visits him every day. I mean, religiously. All families have been banned from going that's terrible. I know, my mom, I'm going to see her tomorrow, but it's just family only can go see her. Right. At, the, at her elderly apartment. Yeah. That was at the request of the patients, the family ban. Oh, really? No, he's joking. We're all laughing. <laughs> I don't want to see anybody. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Todd just gave you a look like, yeah, that's your Phil. Don't, you know. So you don't deal with other truck drivers much, right, Todd? You said? I'm, yeah, I'm pretty much a loner. Uh, I really don't. I mean, I know other truck drivers, but, mm -hmm. you know, we don't bump into each other. We're all around different parts of the state, um, you know, the, the country or whatever. So, so you, you, haven't, really you haven't had the ability to talk with any of them to see how they're feeling about this? You know, mm, I can listen to whatever they got to say on a TV or I can go yeah. on a truck stop and listen to them. But again, I, I, I'm a loner. I stay pretty much by myself. How has this affected your business? You, 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 you said it was hurting your business, right? Yeah, I spoke to my uh, fleet manager and um, it's hurting in some spots, but it's definitely picking up with the toilet paper. And the, and the, and the, um, the hand sanitizers, and they got loads now. Yeah, just for that, right. yeah. taking two dollars uh, two dollars a mile, just pulling that. Yeah. yeah. So I'd be doing. That. I used to run toilet paper. I ran toilet paper and paper towels everywhere. There We're you go. having to borrow trailers because we have so many loads going out. Really? Yep. Really? That's what I used to say about my sex life. Thank you. I'll be here all week. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, I wonder if they'll I'll take my monetization away for that joke. They'd have to listen to it because there's not, no dirty words in it. But yeah, um, yeah. This whole toilet paper thing, I think, has been the the weirdest uh, manifestation of this thing about why people suddenly go for the toilet paper. Uh, I, I mean, hope their toilets get oh. overplugged. In I fact, hope the sewage <laughs> stops. They better buy plunges to be around. Tonight, <laughs> tonight I saw somebody who went, went, went up because Marjorie had to get money out of the uh, ATM, or ATM, which I guess is a killing device because you could get germs from just, you know. Oh, yeah. but, um, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, as we're going up, there's somebody on the street corner with about, I guess, maybe 30, 40 candles, red and green candles lit. And we couldn't figure out why. I saw red and green too. Does that mean something? Yeah. A boat. Christmas uh, is over. Yeah. Yeah, right. Well, who, 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 somebody else saw the same thing? No. Yeah, I saw red and green lights tonight in Jersey. In, in Does candles. Does it mean something? Yeah. Does it mean something? Is it some kind of like. Uh, A signal, yeah. Scotty, beam me up. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> UFO taking people and exploring yeah, their people. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, so, uh, well, uh, you know. Otherwise, uh, I, 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 how do you people feel about the way the networks, the news networks have been handling this whole thing? Terrible. I was going to bring that up. Yeah, get, get, go. Uh, ha, have at it, because I was going to say, I know what you're going to say. Go ahead. It's it's the way that the words that they're using, and, and they're just, they're, they're, they're using all these, uh, I forgot what they, I'm um, <laughs> shitty at these uh, objectives or whatever, these extra words they're throwing in there. You know, I, the terrible this, and the terrible that. And, and look at what, what this happening with this. They're just enunciating way too much and they're, they're building these panels of the coronavirus panel. Well, that, that, that their was laptops a, have yeah. stickers on them that say coronavirus panel. And they're all sitting around taking questions, and, so and you know the whole fucking hour is on. Sorry, yeah, effing hour is is which, on coronavirus, and it's net? like which it's net? been going on for two weeks now, and it's it's okay. a bunch of BS. What we net? Haven't heard this. Uh, well, the one that I saw that especially bothered me again is MSNBC, who have become the horrors to beat all horrors. Okay, exactly. And they have literally what I would call their coronavirus set. Exactly. It's like they've got the background is all coronavirus, and, and then they they've got, got the, all the all the countries that have the coronavirus the big balls with the with the things, the cells hanging out of them and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's go to the coronavirus set, you know. And so I, I went over to see if CNN was doing the same thing. And I went over to CNN, and there was a woman just sitting at a desk, you know, with a thing in back of her that said coronavirus. They just want to walk into the studio and start spraying it. I mean, they have become so terrible over there, and it bothers me because that should be the network I should love. You know? Yeah. And and they've become such such horrors, really. Yes. Yeah. I agree. I agree. It's, it's part of the it's part today, of the hysteria. Go weeks. ahead, disagree with me, Phil. <laughs> yeah, you hate them. <laughs> uh, I, I don't want to buy cupcakes. <laughs> what what'd you uh, what? You know, I think they're all ginning it up quite a bit. Uh, you know, I think the only person that's got it straight is uh, is Trump. You know, he's saying, hey, don't overreact and uh, yeah. wash your hands. And uh, we're working on a tests and, vi and, and an antidote. Did, did, you, get the feeling, did you get the Trump feeling he that, that he was guy? actually you know. afraid? To uh, Bolasero, the first test that he took, mm -hmm. according to his son, uh, this morning he was interviewed. Uh, he got a positive, but then he got a negative. So it could have been a false positive, the first test. <laughs> The second test came out negative. Yeah. So Olacero, uh, the president of Brazil, does have uh, the coronavirus at this time. Right. But or what I'm saying he? is it, it's like it's almost like Trump is afraid to take the test. Uh, he said tonight that he would. Uh, he said, when I have time. Well, I got news for you. Walk into your <laughs> office, let him swab your goddamn cheek. Put it in the petri dish or whatever they do, and get the results back to you in thirty minutes. It's that easy. It's not like, do I have enough time today to get my coronavirus test? It would be that nice if he basketball player got his back in about thirty minutes. It'd be nice if he took it as an example to the rest of America. 
You it's know? like the income taxes. He won't well, do that either. Let's know the income tax, and we don't know about the coronavirus. It is, it is an example to America because he's not getting a test he doesn't think he needs. Well, I'll tell you something. Hey, wait a do second. Oh, sorry. What were you going to say? Go how, ahead, how do Ray. You know he hasn't had the test. He could, he could be lying, like he lies about everything else. I mean, maybe he did have the test. Well, I'll tell you what he did and do. Maybe he's sick. He came back from China, and when he came back from China, do you remember where he went immediately? To the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. no. Where'd he go? He went to Walter Reed. He did. Yes. It was, uh -huh. it was for a checkup. For a, yes, yes, but no, but it, it was suspicious. It was a suspicious uh, checkup because it was immediately uh, after. It was immediately after coming back from China. Yes, it was immediately after coming back from China, but it was months before the coronavirus thing. No, it, no, it wasn't. Why would you believe anything he says? Why would you believe anything that this guy said? I believe what you say, but I just take it with a grain of salt. Well, well, that's fine, but why would you believe anything Trump says? He lies all the time. I don't care what you think about I don't me. Think he does. You know, and this segment has been brought to you by Schmata toilet paper. It's Democrat <laughs> propaganda to form a lie. That's all it is. It's what? It's Democratic propaganda to form a liar. He's a xenophobe. A oh, you xenophobe. must be kidding. Say, wait a minute, Phil, Phil, yeah. hold on a second. I where did where did I bring I had some Kool-Aid here for you to drink. I was just uh, gonna say and, you drank the Kool-Aid. Mm, <laughs> there was no Kool-Aid on the shelves in your uh, supermarket today, uh there, Charlene. Uh that's because all the Democrats in New Jersey drank it. By the way, on on Amazon you can get toilet paper. If you really need toilet paper, folks, you can get it on Amazon. Okay. I, uh, but you can't get but if you if you look for Purell. It right. tells you what you can do instead of Purell. <laughs> I saw a can of Lysol for a thousand seventy nine dollars, and it came in a gift box. <laughs> I swear to God, I did an Amazon search, and I was going to try to buy a bunch of, uh, you know, the small packages of the hand wipes. You know, maybe fifteen hand wipes in a package, and There's give. Not them either, yeah. I was going to give them the customers that, you know, came into the store and we started talking to them. You know, by the way, here, take this. It might come in handy. I couldn't buy them. You no. cannot buy those things. Really? I'm going to buy some napkins and rebrand them as uh, buttkins, butt napkins. Right. <laughs> You're going to have to use whatever you can. Tissues, uh, napkins. Stupid. You know, inner napkins will work, right? Clog yeah. up the toilet. You know, yeah, you don't want to have the hand, you know, you know, uh, wipes where you can wipe down surfaces and wipe your hands and things. So, yeah, I thought it would be a good idea to give away. You know, like a cup of coffee? Here, how about some hand wipes? Hey, listen, by the way, I'll just tell you this quickly. We went out and we had dinner out tonight. We went to the Harlem Tavern up here, which was kind of, it's usually filled, and it was about only about half filled. Yeah. And we ordered, we wanted menus, and she only gave us one menu. And we said, can we have another menu? And they said, no, we're only handing out one menu per table. We said, why? She said, because we wipe each of these with Purell when we're through using them. Oh and all God. the waiters and waitresses had gloves on. I mean, <laughs> and I, I said, good for you. You know, you really do care that we don't drop dead from this thing, you know? <laughs> But, and they said we're considering doing away with the with the plastic menu they had and just printing them up on paper and then when people are through with them just wadding them up and throwing them in the garbage you know and they, yeah and that's the way of handling it well Josh has everybody been been decent tonight it's a good show yeah I think it, 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 damn good and I and it's been a pleasure and also I think the shorter format works. I think it really does, because just by the time we're starting to get tired of talking about stuff, it's time to go. Like, the theme starts getting played. Party's over. Yeah. <laughs> Good seeing you again, Kathleen. Do it more often. I wish you were working yeah. so damn hard. But Good to hear from Kathleen. Yeah. 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 Lift the... Once we go into quarantine, it'll be all good. <laughs> okay. And uh, also, a thanks to Jeff. Thanks to Josh. Thanks to Phil. Of course, I'll thank you, Phil. Uh, Kevin, thank you. Thank you, Tony. Thank you, Todd. Thank you, Ray. Thank you, Charlene. You see, I'm not that far gone that I couldn't remember all of you. 
Uh, by the way, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Uh, let me hang up on them un unceremoniously so that we can uh, get the lines ready for the next uh, wonderful group of people who are going to join the uh, the uh, intersection with Jack Bishop, which is next over most of the same station. Uh, I'm off uh, until, uh, uh, let's see here, we'll, we'll be back on Tuesday. I, I can't see any reason why I won't be back on Tuesday, okay? Uh, I could be I'm not back on Tuesday if I'm not feeling well, but I'm feeling okay, so and it, it makes me feel happy and everything else. In the meantime, uh, stay tuned for Jack next. Uh, and also come back here again on Tuesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice weekend.